Oh, great. Hami's got to figure out his suit while fighting someone else's. Here's a look at McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, the Blue Beetle movie, Carapax. An experienced lieutenant and war veteran, Carapax Guatemalan with inscrutable Mayan features, hardened by his 50 years and military demeanor, is now bionically enhanced right-hand man of Victoria Cord. Having endured the experimentations of Cord Industries, Carapax is able to unleash virtually indestructible weaponry at will, but underneath the heavy armor, he's struggling to mask the scars of his past battles. Forget about the weapons that he wields, Conrad is a walking weapon. Before we get a closer look at the Blue Beetle movie Carapax, let me go ahead and thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide the sample we could have a look at. A little late on this one, but still we're going to grab the tape measure and see how tall the figure stands. First though, in inches, if you really count the top, I suppose that would be the highest point on the figure. Then Carapax stands about nine and a quarter inches in height. If you, though, are one that prefers to have your measurements up to the top of the head of the figure, then the figure is only about 8 inches in height. And that works out to be a figure that's roughly, again, going by only these antennas on the back of the figure's body, about 23 centimeters tall. If it also helps as well, we can bring in the earlier looked at blue beetles. This one to the right is the one that's going to be, well, on this side of the figure's body, if you're looking at it from the screen. The blue beetle that has the wings, you can see, is only going about to the shoulder area. And really, nothing does then change when we bring in the other Jaime Reyes. And I did say in his reviews, I called him Jamie, but his real name is actually Jaime Reyes. But then if you were to bring in, say, the regular blue beetle, who really isn't any bit different than the one that has the wings, again, it's only going to about maybe the shoulder section or so of character. Carapax. Now, I did say earlier the weapons that he wields, the irony in all that is the fact that Carapax doesn't come in clue with anything else than swappable hands, a display stand, and a trading card. Looking first at the trading card, it seems to be using sort of that illustration design that we saw similarly when we looked at Hamie's cards as well. I do like the look of these at least, so it's not using source material. Well, source material in the sense that it's not using a still from the movie. I actually like that instead they sort of went with more of an illustration of the character. A care packs, of course, listed down below that is the fact that he's also appearing in the Blue Beetle movie, which I have actually will say I did enjoy the Blue Beetle movie, I think, more than I liked the Flash movie. Did you guys prefer Blue Beetle more, or did you prefer The Flash more? Let me know down below in the comments section. Spin, though, around. The real name is Conrad Carapax. He's one of those villains, of course, that just decides to use his last name as the main character's the villain's name. I would probably have changed the name myself so that nobody just simply looks it to the mail and says, Oh, hey, the guy who's got his electric bill that's being delivered to his house just happens to also have the last name Carapax. I'd probably change my name a little bit. But you can see as well that... There's a paragraph read. You can stop and read for yourself. It happens to be the same thing I read at the beginning of the review as well. Let's move that to the side. The figure also comes in clue with a display stand. Judging by, again, like the sizing of the figure and how big his feet are, I don't think it's that far removed to include a display stand. I don't think it really necessarily need one of those large display stands because, again, like even though it's a big-sized figure, it doesn't have overly-sized, big, large, boat-sized shoes. I really think like this display stand is fine and good for the type of figure that we're actually getting here. you got, once again, the DC logo printed down below here. And, of course, you got the one peg up to the far corner that can plug into the under boots of either one of boots of Carapax. Let's slide that to the side. The figure also comes included with some swappable hands. Again, I would have probably hoped to have used the plastic. Not that I can really speak for the people working behind the scenes at McFarlane Toys and where they de decide to designate the plastic material. But instead of maybe getting these hands, I would have really loved if they could have used the hands to maybe use some weapons or something that they figured could have come included with. The weapons, though, at least the hands not really being weapons, the hands themselves are molded well in kind of a black plastic. The thing about the hands, though, is that they're really hard to change out on the figure. Just because once we pick the figure up, you'll see right away. His fist that he has right now is so encapsulated by all the molding of the forearms around it that it's really hard to kind of get in there and yank the hand out the first time. Having already done it a couple of times on these hands, it's a little bit now easier. But the first time you do it, you really have to struggle because there's really not a lot to hold on to. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the hand for right now. We're going to then replace it with the relaxed hand. And again, that'll just plug in place. These hands are actually a lot easier to pull for the obvious reasons that there's just a lot more finger to pull on to. 
And again, you can remove and change the hands that way. But that's the only accessories, sad to say, that come included with care packs. Again, I would have liked if you could have come included with something else as well. I'm not necessarily meaning like a swappable head sculpt. Maybe this guy will see a future down the road of getting a gold release where he may have, of course, Conrad Care Packs' alternate head sculpt. And then you can just swap it out simply with the head sculpt that's here. Head sculpt wise, for what we get here, it's a really interesting looking design character. Very heavily influenced, of course. Carapax was actually way back in the day, long even before Hamey adopted the role of Blue Beetle. I think he was actually around the earlier days of the previous Blue Beetle. Of course, he has changed his design over the, over the many years that he's appeared in the comics. I think at one point when he was battling Hamey in the comics, he was running off of steam. Why was that even a good idea? But the design of the character, at least from the movie, definitely has more like an Iron Man design to it. I sort of like the way they've sculpted the eye to have sort of like this V-shaped formation. The coloring is also handled well here. You've got some yellow, some additional orange that's added in there as well, just to add a little bit of a departure so it's not just straight yellow. It looks like they definitely did apply some really decent paint on the figure. That same yellow and orange, as I try to get my finger out of the way, is also shared by the coloring that he has also here on the shoulders as well as the back struts here these large pieces that stick out the back of the figure's body. There really is some nice use of this kind of brownish burgundy color that they've used all across the figure's body. Throughout that though, you can see like there's little indications and some little accented areas that are also added in there in the orange as well. The base color is mostly just the black, but again, like the way they painted the figure from head to toe looks fantastic. Uh, you can see also as well the way they've sculpted the arms. There's, again, a lot of plastic being at, at play here. A lot of plastic going into this mold. And it also equals a figure that for his size, really, there's a fair bit of weight going on with him. While the back of these don't actually move around, they are have they do again have some really nice sculpted detail. You can see as well the way they've sculpted the back of the figure's neck also as well. And while though these don't move, it's nice to see at least that the shoulders do. So if you wanted to play with play around with these, you can also rotate these around as well. Almost looking like he's better about ready to fire something at the blue beetle. So I like there's a little bit of posability. That certainly will also come in handy as well when it comes to really moving the figure around. The fact that you can actually take these shoulders and move them around as they're on own their own independent ball joint peg. Speaking of the figure's articulation, starting first with the head sculpt, the head is very generously afforded a ball joint. You can see that not only does it move well, it moves up and down, but also can rock back and forth as well. I thought figure the figure may have had also a neck joint, but it's not the case. You can see like the neck is basically just sculpted the rest of the figure's torso, but still though the head does rotate all the way around. It does look up and down and also back and forth as well. I don't know why though, looking at care packs, it reminds me of something I would have seen in the Disney film, The Black Hole. Am I really the only one that maybe thinks, remember those red robots that were in, anybody remember that? The Black Hole? How far, how far back am I dating myself by, I think it was like a mid eighties movie. Anyways, though, the articulation, he also has that in the abdomen area. So the torso, you can rotate back and forth this way, up and down. But a little further from that, I was surprised to see that he actually had a secondary ball joint. I honestly think that this would have been more than enough, but still, they managed to pack in there a secondary ball joint right at the base of the abdomen, right there. As for the arms, the arms do move forward and back. They obviously move out the figure's elbow. I really think it's smart the way they handled the joint here. If you look at it from the forearm standpoint, I mean, it doesn't really actually look like there's any bit of a hinge there. I would imagine just you'd be able to swivel it back and forth. But if you look though real closely, you can see that there's a hinge right there, if I get my fingernail out of the way, where you can actually bend the elbow. Really nice little hidden area of articulation. Of course, the hands do rotate back and forth. Mileage may vary depending on which hand you use. I mean, obviously, if you're gonna use the fist, for example, little to no movement. I mean, obviously it moves, but it's just really hard to get your own hand in there to start moving the smaller hands of care packs. Uh, as for the legs, the legs do split out. They're on ratcheted joints. Uh, again, really surprised to see how much the legs split, at, you know, again, as far as they do. You can take the legs and move them forward. You can move them back. A swivel at the top of the thigh. The figure has a double hinge on the knee. Nice to see that. And he also has some decent articulation. Really strong ratcheted joint here. Not only in his ankle this way, but you can also rock it back and forth. And the figure does have, again, toe articulation. Mentioned already, the figure does also have peggles in the undersides of his feet. So again, you want to use yourself to display stand. Balancing wise, the figure doesn't seem to have too much of an issue when it comes to really standing properly. Of course, then for comparison's sake, let's bring back in Hemi Reyes, the, of course, the blue beetle at the time that this movie is coming around. Yeah, again, I really like the look of these. I had to wait a little longer, unfortunately, just with all the other things I was looking at here on this channel to really get back to looking at the blue beetle movie stuff. 
just recently re-watching the Blue Beetle. I actually had more fun, I would say, watching the Blue Beetle movie than I did watching the Flash movie. It seems with every subsequent watch of the Flash, I dislike it a little bit more. Whereas the Blue Beetle, I actually really thought it was a fun movie. Sort of a Iron Man Jr., if you will. And sort of like how Iron Man had the Iron Monger being somebody that really kind of inherited the same similar armor. Also was the case here with Conrad Carapax. He had sort of a larger, bigger, more meaner build to the Blue Beetle body. And again, it's a really interesting figure that translated extremely well here to plastic form. What I really liked about Carapax was the fact that the character wasn't a movie-created villain. That would be fine and good, but it's always nice to be going out back to the older pages of the comics. And actually, Carapax first debuted in Blue Beetle No. 1 from 1986. Mind you, though, he wasn't battling Hamie at the time. Instead, he was battling the, the Blue Beetle at the time, which was Ted Kord. Uh, Carapax has made then several appearances since, not only battling Ted Kord, but then also battling Hamie Reyes later on in the series' run. Now, of course, the elaborate more costume that he gets here in the movie looks much more fancier than maybe some of the suits he would have had in the original pages of the comics. I do like the look of this suit. It definitely resonates a little more like an Iron Man look to it, which goes without saying, obviously, anyone that's in a mech suit usually always is recognized right away as being that kind of Iron Man looking suit. The V, fate, the v formation shape that he has on the front of his helmet really kind of gives him a sinister look. And the real nice use of colors that they've added to this figure. You can really tell that they've put a lot of time and a lot of effort to paint the figure from head to toe. All in all, though, it's a really interesting looking figure. It's also one of those cases, too, where I feel like even if you didn't really necessarily like Blue Beetle or maybe even haven't even seen the movie, he's an interesting enough character to pick up just from the design alone. Once again, a big thank you to the folks over at McFarland Toys that did provide the sample of the Blue Beetle Conrad Carapax. Although when he's a villain, he only goes by Carapax. I think that's still a bad idea. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And between the two, I guess, live action DC films we've gotten recently, which one did you think was a better movie? Blue Beetle or The Flash? We'll see how many people weigh in down below in the comment section. Also, as well, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't want to hit it with a like. If you guys are loving, of course, the content you guys are seeing and you're on board for more DC Multiverse stuff, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on the bell notification. Of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.